Um, so the next 40 minutes we'll speak about not about concrete technology, but a bit in general about architecture and architectures and role of them. Uh, my presentation will contain some parts. Um, in the first, I'll just define what is architecture role in the projects, um, is it good or bad, make some formal architecture definitions. And uh, the most of uh, the biggest part of my presentation is uh, just some cases. So I, to be honest, I try to find the good experience, good cases as well, but mostly is uh, some problems, some issues, some catastrophes that the people made uh, in the projects because of architecture was too sophisticated or not sophisticated enough, or people just ignore the architecture completely. Uh, then you go through this uh, five or six cases and make a conclusion. Uh, presentation contains my own cases, so taken from the projects I participated, and also some uh, cases pre presented by, by Stefan Tilkov uh, from, from InnoQ. It's also so close to my experience that I just take it in the presentation as well. Uh, so shortly about me, I'm working as a solution architect in the Talent team that I produce a product based on the some Apache uh, open source uh, projects. Therefore, I also participate in Apache community, in PMC and Apache CXF, make some contribution in Apache Synco, Parias, and Apache Carap. So if we're talking about architecture, sometimes it's a bit even insult that I see that they say he's architect, um, perhaps it doesn't really understand what they're talking or uh, draw some strange pictures, spin it on the wall and nobody care about what the architect do. So I don't really share this view on the architecture and try to prove that um, it's a really essential role in the uh, system development. Uh, if you look uh, into the formal architecture definitions, uh, what is architecture itself? Um, this is a ISO uh, formal definition that defines the system architecture as a uh, uh, environment, with a, basically with the elements and relationship between the elements. This is essential in the, in the architecture. And of course, it's not things what finished, it's evaluate to make kind of evolution. This makes, the definition makes a lot of sense. But I also like uh, the definition from, from, from Grady Butcher that said, basically the architecture is the things what are uh, the best, uh, to, uh, better to do in the good way. Because if it, to turn in the wrong way, it's really hard. Also, it's produce a pain for the team. And it doesn't, doesn't mean that it's completely, it's not possible to change it, but changing the architecture, the wrong architecture decision is harder as changing, for example, implementation. And uh, also quite uh, good uh, definition that the architecture is anything that the team considers to be important enough for system evolving and development. That means that uh, also it should not be dedicated person who make architecture. It could be everybody from the team or the whole team itself. And also it's very important to define what is should be in scope of architecture because in lots of projects I see that architecture's case about very small um, development details. So like what frameworks should be used or what version of frameworks or how, how, how code is formatting, what is the quality of unit assets. It's really should be not normally in the architectural level. And from other side, they ignore an essential architecture solution where influence on this through the system. So this granularity is quite, quite important. Uh, also, I'd like to highlight what an architecture is not, is not some upfront activity. Uh, so it's still it's a vision of architecture that should be done before you start the implementation and that done this as well. so this finish with the architecture and start with development. It's not so the architecture is really evolving together with, with the system as a continuous process. 
Also, architecture is not a document or description. It's basically the property of your system is a, is a system has an architect. Either is uh, intentional, so you make it intentionally, or if you don't care about that, so you have some end up with some accidental architect architecture, but the system still will have one. Uh, what is a good architecture? Is a question <laughs> basically could be answered in the same way as uh, what is a good car? So it's perhaps uh, have some uh, matter of test, but also sometimes you uh, think about what you're going to do with this car. For example, if people make a vacation, perhaps this one will be better fit. And for me, even such kind of car helps in the certain situation. So it's basically it's the same for the architecture. If you look in the uh, quality of the diff different aspects of the quality, that's normally even every system has, but uh, the system has this aspects in the different with different priority. For example, you can uh, force usability. So usability could be very important for you, but maintainability is not so important because not so essential because uh, it's only short-term solutions that will be redesigned as soon. Or you care about security, so really high security, but not performance. Performance and scalability is not so important. And dependent on this priority, uh, you form your architecture. It's basically very obvious uh, things, but the people still missing that. And they try to copy architecture one-to-one -one from one system to another. Also, we'll, if we look, for example, to um, characteristic as a scaling and complexity, so the vertical uh, line is a, a, a kind of scaling, and um, the horizontal line is a, a complexity. Then you can put, for example, simple admin GUI here. It's very simple, could be designed or, or implemented over weekend, and only has a, some users. Uh, Twitter, from my point of view, is not so complex in the logic, but should scale quite well. So, as, as Netflix and Facebook are more complicated in the in the logic, and even more uh, has has, uh, has a highest um, grade of scale. Uh, Amazon is more complicated, has a sophisticated logic, but should not scale so much as a Facebook. And if you implement some insurance policy of management system. It's a uh, hell to implement, but have no such much use as you know, so should not scale so, so much. And this is essential to define the architecture. If you just take the architecture from the uh, Netflix and copy it one to one to implement insurance policy, very probably will fail because system has completely other requirements and other uh, characteristics and other qualities. Let's go to the cases which I prepared. Um, the, every case has a kind of structure which I present. And the first part, uh, I give a bit of context, which, uh, which, which, what is the business area was, uh, how a um, large team was, was a, bit about, a little bit about history of project. After that, I describe my observation, what was really a problem, what, what uh, hurts, what was a pain. And in the last part, make a bit uh, wrap up for with lesson learned in which basically what the solution would do is, uh, helps to go for this, this catastrophe situation. Uh, the first case I named the painful sharing. The customer was a commerce shop uh, that uh, basically migrate from a standard e-commerce framework to self-implemented system. The development team, team was about 30 person and in that time, the microservices was already known, but not so um, spread, so widespread, widespread. And what we end up, uh, what the team end up, this, this is kind of architecture. So on the uh, top level was uh, services uh, with REST, REST API. But uh, during the implementing the services, the people uh, team uh, see that the some functionality could be shared between the service. And to not implement it the second time, they just put in this so named domain. Domain services or uh, domains that basically share, contain sharing functionality between different services. Uh, and uh, the common utilities, common things are, was, was put in a co common models. So 
we put it in the core domain, and this core domain was shared across all domains and all services. On the low level was the connectors that provide the connectivity to the messaging system, SAP, and database. Database was also central one. So we end up with this architecture on the first view. It's not so bad, at least the dependency was only in one direction. But the main uh, problem and the main pain was uh, uh, yeah, also they, uh, they uh, deployed the single container. And the main pain was um, domains. So connectors was not so bad because the app was quite stable. We implemented once and even the modification, of course, was some additional features or migration to the new version, but they modified not so often. But the domains that contains business logic was a real pain because they modified by different teams. So we introduced as the team was big enough and we make a kind of responsibility which team is responsible for which set of services. And the domain was really shared. So multiple teams make uh, the changes in the domains. And it was, was, was real painful because uh, it should align or the feature could align releases. It's easy to break functionality uh, in the running container from, from one team to another. Uh, also, the test was quite, quite difficult. Uh, so especially domains was a huge problem there. So it's quite difficult to, to, uh, to maintain, to update, to uh, implement the new features. Also, deployment was deployed in a cutoff container, uh, causes also a lot of uh, problems by dependencies. If you team one team produce a new version, you should switch dependency to, to this new version as well. And it was very fragile. So it's a lot of in a lot of cases, I just you know, break the whole deployment for all team and all team waiting until you repair the deployment. And also migration to the new versions in the whole container, like a migration to the cutoff, new JDK, new CXF was quite difficult because you should do it as big bang for all teams once. This is observation. Um, what is this, what was the solution? What we what we did in this situation? Um, do it by step by step. So in the first step, we just copy code, really copy code one to one, uh, the main code into the uh, vertical teams. So user has own uh, order domain and card has own customer domain. They just copy without any modification, just change the package, uh, change the model name, and that's all. So there's a lot of duplication, yes. We should deal with this duplication sometimes, but the duplication was uh, less critical as a sharing in this case. It was the first step. On the second step, we um, decided to uh, separate some services that um, really has a different characteristics or has a different scalability and uh, they use a different technologies in the separate containers. It was a next step. And in the last step, we uh, provide containers for every team. So every team has set of containers. There is no shared container when the different team deploy the things. And for some services, they just uh, remove the unnecessary parts from the domains and integrate it directly into the services. So not necessary to take uh, to, to, to keep it as a separate model. Sometimes it still makes sense if it's large enough. But in a lot of cases, they just disappear as domains and will be part of the service. Also, we split the database on this uh, uh, part that the every team, uh, every vertical team has their own database and very important has their own deployment. The common domain uh, was also the lot of the huge part of functionality was migrated in the, in the services and the rest to interpret as a third party library has their own life cycle uh, and will be released uh, after the every change basically. So this solution uh, increased the uh, uh, enormous uh, performance and motivation of the team because every team has own environment. They can experiment, can apply the new technologies they like, can make their own decisions. And also there is a synergy. So other team, if one team uh, tries something, other team looking and try to re-implement and uh, uh, leverage this experience. So they're really, performance and productivity uh, was increased enormous. So lesson learned, um, it's really 
sharing models or think twice between share model, especially across the teams, it's most critical things from my point of view. And duplication is uh, in a lot of cases less critical as a common dependencies. Also utility, common utilities should be treated as a third party libraries as its own life cycle and make it thin and or avoid it as, as, as possible if, if it's possible. And uh, very important that the involving and maintenance system inside the team is a lot, a lot of easier as a, as a cross team. So the team should own its code and have own deployment pipelines. This was quite important for the performance. Second case, I name it non-extensible extensibility. The customer was an um, e-commerce um, provider, but in this case, it produced frameworks that used by other e-commerce shop. So there's a different uh, customers of this framework, and they basically use this framework to build own shops. Um, therefore, this framework should be highly customizable. So it's a different kind of customer that use this framework. Um, and interestingly, it was, if we put the costs that the customer would like to be able to pay and uh, customization grade, there uh, was two groups of customers. The first group was a large strategic customers that would like to have a lot of customization and but be able to ready to pay for that. And another group was a small customer that just changed the small things like a logo or view of the uh, gra graphical interface and basically satisfied with the standard solution. And the decision what the team make was very, very uh, uh, unfortunate. They put exactly in the between. So they provide a very complicated uh, configuration tool. So it's based on Eclipse RCP. You should download about 150 megabytes of uh, Eclipse RCP application and configure in this environment uh, the system based on the customer needs. And as a result, both groups of customers are unsatisfied. The large strategic customers was unsatisfied because they need more customization. So functionality which we provide with, uh, what was provided with uh, this tool was not enough. And small customer complained that they are complete, they are, this customization tool is too complex. They don't need to understand the whole thing to change a small logo, for example. And lesson learned, uh, which is uh, uh, really, if you attempt to satisfy everyone, you will likely end up to satisfy no one. What is a solution for that? What's quite easy because of large strategic customer has uh, be able to pay for the customization. We just provide a custom solution. So a piece of software was dedicated exactly for this custom. Of course, they need to handle a bit more in the code. You have some uh, repositories, additional repositories, and uh, you should test it, uh, test customer specific functionality. But the effort to support these uh, different uh, branches of the product was not so much as a support and testing this huge customization for, uh, possibility. And the most important for the customer was quite satisfied because they really create, uh, receive the, obtain the solution uh, what, 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 what they like. And small customer just was happy with basic solution and continue to use it with very small uh, uh, configuration based, so file-based configuration change. So the lesson here is it's a specific solution and often more preferable as a very high generic one and highly customizable one that's configurable. Next case, I name over fine-grained. And the uh, uh, in this case, the context was a very large scale B2B food retailer. Uh, it was a new company is uh, uh, growing from, from startup. And the team it was also very important. The team was initially 40 people and then it grows to 200 uh, developers. It's also my observation. So sometimes a very successful system have the worst architecture, have very bad architectures uh, because uh, of two reasons. The first reason that uh, if the system is successful, a developer team receive a lot of requests, a lot of uh, feature requests from the customers, and they have just have no time physically to care about the architecture and good design. The first reason. 
And the second reason is that quite difficult to convince the management that if system successful and brings the money, why we should change anything. So what happens in this case, um, the chief architect was in the conference who pushed microservices and they decide to split the system in very, very small uh, pieces that uh, every person, every develop, developer case about one microservice. This was, this, that, that was an idea. And it works for some times, but uh, the system, uh, the team and the system grows. And in some step, uh, it's not it not not possible anymore that, that every person care about uh, all microservices. We need to define the team, and uh, then we find that uh, unfortunately the services are overlapped. Yeah, so if you would like to do something useful, you should modify the common uh, the, the shared services, and this really make a problem in the the whole the whole story. So basically, the team structure, organizational structure. Uh, destroy the initial architecture uh, ideas. So, for example, it was a uh, typical example was other service that's from other microservices. So, from, my, for, from one, one point of view, it makes a lot of sense to put other functionality inside the service, but the problem has dependency from the a lot of other microservices. There's a billing aspect, say, a fulfillment support checkout. It's even worse, they have a piece of code. So one piece of uh, uh, the billing specific, the second fulfillment specific, support specific, and checkout specific. And if you have a such a picture, it's 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 really bad for my experience so because uh, different teams will modify the pieces of these the services, yeah, and they basically end up with the same problem as in my first case. It's easy to break uh, this functionality. It's quite difficult to uh, should ag uh, align about all changes, about all features, align releases. It makes the development very, very difficult. Um, the question why it happens. So why the people uh, cut the system in the very small, tiny, tiny, tiny uh, parts? Mostly, it's because uh, because the copy architecture of Netflix. Yeah. So it's a bit stupid idea. So not everybody wants to be Netflix, but your requirements normally is not a Netflix requirements. You don't produce a highly scalable distributed video streaming system. And if you copy it one to one, uh, perhaps it's not it's what the things what works for Netflix quite well will not work for you. Which was the solution? So instead to have a monolithic front end uh, on the top and uh, very small, tiny microservices uh, uh, in the back end, we tried to split uh, it vertically so that it, at least every system, uh, every team uh, will get their own uh, code and own deployment. Also have their uh, own front end and all. Uh, uh, set of microservices. It's still not optimal design, but at least uh, if every every team has their own sheet and can improve it gradually. In this case, it was quite important step. Uh, it was deployed also by in, in Apache Caraf. So technologically, it uh, Caraf also helps us um, um, to find optimal split between the microservices, optimal bounds. Uh, you can model it with the OGI services. And if it works on OGI vault, you can also uh, extract it and uh, uh, split and, and deploy separate as a microservice in this case. What happens with other service? This aspects uh, building fulfillment and support tasks will join to the uh, services, so on, on services, and basically the other service disappear completely. So this problem was resolved this way. Uh, lesson learned in this case, small is not always beautiful. So if you cut the system as a small pieces, it doesn't automatically mean that you end up with a nice architecture. Also refactoring inside team boundaries is more easy, more effective, uh, and evaluation of system inside the team boundaries is more easier as, as, as across a team. And also, I find that uh, OSI service in CARF is very good to use the full proof of concept to find the correct granularity and correct system boundaries because you should not change the deployment. You just define the granularity in OSI service first, 
And if you find the correct one, you just extract the service as a microservice, this as a microservice. Next case, I also see in a lot of projects, I name it Cargo Cult. Uh, the project was a um, framework, it started to control, to discover and configure uh, web services and security web services. The customer was a flight modeling company and the team was not, 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 not so large, only 10 developers. And what I see in the design, uh, so this kind of thing. So in every, there are a lot of layers and in every layer provides a set of interfaces and implementations what injected in the next layer. So if you look in the system design was for example, configuration service and service registry, they have API level, configuration layer, model layer, and uh, some a number of was uh, six or seven layers with interfaces in, in implementation. The idea behind that was following that perhaps in the future, we will use other implementation of the configuration layer. So for example, we have now file-based, in the future we'll have a Git based on database-based uh, implementation. Or model level, perhaps we'll implement it another way and we should not change the interface in this case. Or DAO level, the same, perhaps we will use another uh, document-based database that, uh, instead a uh, SQL database and therefore provides uh, abstract with, with, with the interfaces. Uh, for some level layers, it really makes sense, for example, for API and for DAO layer, but for some, the abstraction was really leaky, so it never, never happens because the life cycle of the system is shorter as, uh, uh, as, as uh, uh, data uh, life cycle. So it's not never uh, the use another kind of configuration, never, never use uh, uh, other kind of modeling in, in, in the system. Therefore, for me, it's like a bit looks looks like a bit the cargo cult that happens in the Melanesian Islands and, and during the Second World War when the American uh, uh, so American uh, soldiers, American troops was there, and uh, they provide the equipment and uh, uh, so different kind of equipment using the airdrops. So you just drop something with, from from the air. And the native people who live in this Iceland just see it. And after the American troops uh, leave uh, the Iceland, uh, of course, also this uh, air dropping log logistic uh, not happens anymore. And what the people do, it does try to model, to rebuild the stuff that uh, American soldiers uh, did with expectations that perhaps if they rebuild it, something drops from the air. Uh, so they copy the form without any understanding what it's really for. So it's sometimes in the design, have the, uh, the same things happens with architectures. Uh, so let's learn from this case, a lot of abstraction of the system design are leaky, they're never used as, uh, as, as, as the people see. So therefore, uh, building new layers carefully, uh, not because of, not because of fashion or coolness. Yeah, so should see really a reason to 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 build the layers, and uh, be pragmatic. But from other side, um, predict a bit the system involving which direction the system involved, make it flexible enough to to change in the future. Next case, what I would like to present is a freestyle architecture, and in this case it team uh, really would like to make things correct in, in, in a good way. So it was a uh, so e-commerce online shop with quite a big team, so 100, 120 developers and 10 self-contained team. So it was orchestration organization is quite difficult between them. Therefore, uh, my observation is if you have a number of developers, um, gross number of developers, you need to guarantee more and more decoupling. So if you have only single developers, perhaps the methods or modules is enough. From some level, uh, you introduce the components, let's say modules with additional configuration. From some level, for some number of developers, you need to deal with microservices or uh, to be uh, so the backend things with the independent uh, deploy, uh, deployable and cover the certain business domain. And uh, I'm quite sure that in one day you end up with the systems, so independent systems. The systems has own uh, user interface, logic data, 
and instead put the model in this way, you just split system to system of systems. So it is really a self-contained, self-testable, self-deployable piece of software. And uh, you uh, integrate system using the links or some uh, asynchronous messaging. And this is re it was really good. The system, uh, the team uh, do uh, produce the software exactly this way, uh, accordingly this architecture. Uh, and they said that they never can implement the system if they go other way. But uh, so yeah, instead of have monolithic front end and back end, they just split, uh, in provide this independent system. They uh, uh, cover a uh, certain aspect of the, uh, the whole system. But, but there are some problems with that. Uh, the first one that nobody think and nobody uh, have a solution to how to integrate user interface. And user interface integration was quite hard. They performed not well and it was very, very difficult to maintain. They also, as teams produce a lot of differences in API style and formats. So they created, for example, some teams for the JSON HAL for, for the links, some JSON Seron, I'm use uh, Svega, I use uh, Waddles. So there's a huge difference and it makes also produce a lot of problems and transformations by integration. Um, and as far as they have a problem with uh, integration of front end, they provide just centralized team who care about uh, integration and centralized team immediately becomes a problem and bottleneck. So as soon as you introduce centralized team, you will end up with a bottleneck. So this case exactly shows if you ignore some architectural aspects, it doesn't mean that the system will not have any architecture, but they just end up with some emergency solutions in this case. So they deal just with, with, with some, 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 uh, some accidental architectures. And there is a very fine line between diversity, that's a good thing, so that the team make, uh, helps to uh, teams who work independently, and house. So it's uh, very easy in this case to go in the house and then uh, uh, have issues to integrate the stuff. Uh, also, I quite convinced that loss decoupling. Uh, in loss decoupling, you have only few rules, but it's absolutely necessary to, inf to, to, to follow them strictly because exactly these rules guarantee that your system is loss coupled. For example, you say that it's not possible to connect from some level, so from a microservice directly to the database. And all because follow these rules, your system keeps a, 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 a loss coupled. Uh, last case, what I would like to present is improve with less intelligence. Uh, intelligence. Uh, the context was a bank application that integrate a lot of uh, out of the shelf systems, and they have a highly proprietary integration solution uh, provided by one vendor. And there's only few people in the world that understand how to configure and how to run this. There's a lot of uh, application out of the shelf. And some magical integration broker uh, in the in the in the uh, center that somehow integrates these applications, and this broker uh, covers a lot of uh, uh, aspects. It was a messaging uh, solution in the in the in the nature, but they provide some additional aspects like routing, conversation, transformation, error handling, and business logic. This was really things what you should concern. If uh, such kind of infrastructure provides uh, business logic functionality, some, perhaps something wrong uh, with, uh, with the architecture. And this uh, magic broker was a kind of provide kind of user interface with the blocks you can connect one to another and um, ensure your transformations and also implement some business functions inside that. But the problem was that it's not possible to write really unit tests for that. It's not testable. There's no good continuous integration, continuous deployment, and 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 the end of the day, it was really disaster to implement. So the people, uh, also was quite difficult to match the different features together. The developers uh, just implement one week, and then 
decide, okay, so tomorrow will be uh, match the, the stuff. And it was a very horrible day, so nothing works. Uh, they try to somehow to match the developed feature. It was uh, engineering practices is not really applicable in this case. What we do in the end, uh, we just replace this huge broker with a kind of messaging solution. It was active in queue in this case, but they care only about messaging. They care about queues, about topics, about uh, transport, that letter queues, but not anymore. And they we, we shift there all other kind of functionalities in the staff, uh, we name it adapters, this small red uh, bottles. And we implement uh, using the camel based, uh, provide blueprint implementation. As architectures, we provide just an uh, example of blueprint. If the teams would like to follow this solution, they implement it just in, in the other adapters as well. If they have own uh, ideas and own frameworks, they are free to, 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 to go uh, own way and use other technologies. Uh, this adapters was dockerized. And after that, it was developed, it was quite easy because it's absolutely easy to test it. It's deployable uh, separately, this adapters. And the whole uh, functionality with the PubSub routing transport error handling is uh, taken by a messaging broker. Lesson learned from this, uh, smart and point that pipes really been so. So be, 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 be careful, even the pipes and infrastructure has a nice cool names like uh, uh, service mesh. We still should not be, uh, get a lot of control and especially business logic to the infrastructure. Specific solution again, as I as was in case two, is sometimes better as a generic solution. And this blueprint, I also I really like the blueprint uh, approach because uh, it's a really role of architecture not to just define how it should be on the paper, but pro provides a real piece of code that works for the teams and provide kind of blueprint. Um, and it's not absolutely necessary to follow this 100%, uh, but uh, if the team likes it, just a copy and follow the blueprint. If not, you have um, some own solution that could be in the future, better of your, of, of your, of course, it could be taken for other teams. as well. So general takeaways from the architecture, don't be afraid to do a little bit architecture because if you ignore the architectural aspects, I say the system will have accidental, some architect, uh, accidental stuff. Um, to the simplest thing, be pragmatic from one side, but also think a bit about um, system evolution. So this, so the second and third requirements are bit in conflict. Yeah, they, they, they are. It's really the decision. You can do the only mini, minimal things, but with, with the risk that you should re-implement uh, the system in one year or two years completely. Yeah. So therefore, I prefer to make some flexibility on the architectural level, at least to replace the technology, replace uh, some models or services quite easily to uh, to make the evalu evaluation of the system more easy. And uh, try to not block the teams, not make some uh, kind of limits or strange rules, but create a value and provide, uh, show the way, provide the blueprint solution for the teams as an architect. This is my the important points. So basically that's all from my presentation stuff. Perhaps you have some questions. That's... So thank you so much. It has been very, very interesting. Uh, I think there are no questions. We have been commenting on the chat, but not really questions. Um, the, the general uh, feeling is that this is a very good presentation, so congratulations. Thanks. I don't know if uh, someone wants to ask something. We are already uh, out of time. So maybe we can also move to the birds of a feather. Yep. I don't know. Thanks a lot. So, thanks for participation. Yeah, thanks, Thank so Andre. This was an awesome, awesome uh, presentation. I can only plug uh, this book. So I also pasted the link in the chat. Uh, it's yeah. an awesome book that also deals with these yeah. kind of issues. Yeah. 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 
So, yeah, these things always bite us. And like Andre said, uh, do at least a bit of architecture. Otherwise, you'll get accidental things as ar architecture. You definitely don't want those. So, yeah, I suggest that we move to the birds of a feather session and we can continue this and other discussions there. Yeah. Have a nice rest of the conference and see you. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye.